So I'm beginning to remove the screws on the top of the receiver and I've got one screw removed. I'm going to clean those threads up and uh, you can see this one thread right there. That looks a little rusty, if not rusty and dirty. So we'll get that done before, um, we'll do a little cleaning up before we put the scope mount on. So I just wanted to show you on the side of the Marlin, this is a 336-3030. So these are the plug holes on the side of the receiver. And as you can see, there's threads on these two. And there's no threads here because this is where the ejector goes. show you what I'm talking about. So there's the plug screw itself on an inch ruler. And then you're looking at a screwdriver that is the Grace USA SS3. And as you can see, that fits right into that almost perfectly in the top of the crown of that plug. So today we're going to be putting a Picatinny rail on the receiver here on the Marlin. This is a Marlin 336, it's a 3030 caliber. As you can see, I have already taken out the screws on the top of the receiver, cleaned the threads up a little bit, and I just put a very, very light coat of oil and let it soak in overnight after wiping it down. And we are going to be mounting a Picatinny rail. This one right here is from Tally. This is a 20 MOA extended rail. And then we have the zero MOA Picatinny rail, and this is from Lundstrom. I have the scope rings here. So these are the scope rings with quick detachables. At present time, what I'm going to be doing is a fix by just mounting it with this system down here, um, this bolt and clip. And then we have the two sets of screws. These are the top screws and the bottom screws uh, for this ring. And this is the top and the bottom screws for this ring. I have the appropriate tools to mount this. We have have a T25 torque wrench and that's for these two screws right here. These are panhead screws. They are designed where they, when they snug up they get a little bit of torque and you can see they have a star platform in the head and we have a 1015 torque for these screws up here. And what you're looking at here is a wrench that I got from Fix-It Sticks. It's really nice. It's got a little swivel area right here with that black where you can just rotate it. And then we have your other choice is just your Allen head wrench. And these are sent with the scope rings. This is the short end. This is the long end. The long end is used basically to start your screw. And then once you're down in and you've got a little bit of torque on the screw, then you use the shorter end to snug it up. What I have done before I started this project, I removed the finger lever and I've taken out the bolt so that once I mount the Picatinny rail here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger in here just to double check um, that the screws don't seat all the way down into the action down in here. So just an example of those two Picatinny rails. And if we were to look up here to show you, so here we have the Monstrum and this is the non-extended. As you can see, when I say non-extended, meaning it doesn't extend out into the barrel here. The barrel actually underneath comes up to like right here on the first screw. And then in the back, as you can see by the hammer, if I were to actually situate this, it would look just like that. So you have a little bit of space here, and then you have a little, you're right at the, right over the receiver right here. So that is a non-extended Picatinny rail. Now, if we take a look at the other, this is an extended Picatinny rail. And if I line these holes up, roughly line them up, you can see that the extended Picatinny rail right here, or this base mount for the scope, extends all the way over and into the barrel a little bit. So if we look at that, this is where the receiver is. And then this Picatinny rail is going to extend, oh, probably about three quarters, if not an inch into the barrel up in this area, right up in here. And you can see here, I had the buckhorn, the original front sight, and this is low enough. So I'm leaving this on. This is not going to obstruct anything. So if I ever wanted to take the scope off and still use the buckhorn um, sights, I can still do that. 
So I purchased two scope mounts, uh, one from Monstrum and the other one from Tally. So I'm measuring the Tally one right now. The length on that is 5.4555 inches and we'll measure the Monstrum next. And here's the Monstrum. We're measuring that at a length of 4.7735 inches. This is the Monstrum scope mount. The thread holes are lined up. Two, two up there, two right there, and this is the profile. This is what you would be looking at. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a torque screwdriver. This is a 10 inch pound by 50 inch pound. And we're going to use one of these bad boys so that we mount that scope base mount or the Picatinny rail onto the receiver on the Marlin. And we don't mess up those 840 screws that go into the top. There's four of them. And then uh, after we do that, we're going to mount the tally system, which is the tally scope rings. Those are vertical scope rings. I have all the specs for those. Then after that, we'll sight in the scope. Uh, we'll do the eye relief, and um, when I say sight in, what we'll do is we'll we'll level the scope. We'll make sure everything's um, uh, level with the rifles level, and the scope is level. Okay, but that's a totally another video, and I'll put the links to those up in the video here, um, up in the corner. Whether it's that corner or that corner, I'm not sure, um, but check it out. All right, hey. Thanks for watching the video, and I hope you get some value out of this video. If you do, please subscribe. It'll help my channel grow, and I appreciate it. So one thing I'm doing here, and I mean, this is probably overkill, but I'm putting a couple of paper towels, and then I just ball them up, little pieces right on top of the, the uh, screws that are going to go into the receiver. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some painter's tape and I'm going to put some painter's tape over these little balls right here that are going to press down on the screw. And then I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to put blue Loctite um, on the screw. So let's put the tape on first. Like when I have the paper tape put on the top and then it's pressing down on the, uh, the paper towel balls it's going to push down the threads on the base and then what I'll do is I'll put some blue Loctite on there on those threads and I'll let it drip off onto this um, index guard right there and that way I don't you know gunk a bunch of blue Loctite tight on the base of the rail and I don't get a lot on the bottom of the base that's going to just saturate the top of the receiver and when this dries, um, it turns white because um, I had to remove it off right there. And you can see it leaves a little bit of a stain um, on the top of the receiver. That's what so I'm going to be using um, 242, the thread locker blue. And one thing when you get this, don't forget get to shake it up. Okay. And then I have the threads down here. And what we're going to do is put some thread locker on those. So to show you the way I do it is I take and just dab a little right there in the top of that one. And then keep it at an angle, angle it down. So you want to angle it down and then this is a little index card, and then I just press on the index card. And as you can see, it gets rid of the excess. So you have thread locker on your threads, but not all over the place. And one thing you can do uh, before you put the base mount on is you can clean these up a little bit. Take a paper towel, just wipe those down. And then if you need to, you can put a little bit of thread locker again on each one. And that's not overkill, looks pretty good. And 
Okay. So, and it keeps the thread locker out of the slotted area. So, what I'm going to do next is pop it up on the receiver. So, reading the specs for the screws, uh, the information that I found for a steel base on a Marlin is anywhere between 20 and 25 inch pounds. So, this is how you set your torque screwdriver. This is the zero marking on the base right here where my thumb is. So that's a zero right there. And then this is the 20 with the little slant at an angle and it meets this line right here. And so what you wanna do is you just pull this down and then you rotate your handle down here where my right hand is. And then you set that zero mark right there. So let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So that's what it looks like. That it's 20 inch pound right there. So let's do some torquing here on the rifle. So now I'm gonna torque this to 20 inch pounds. Okay, that felt pretty good. I'll go down here, torque this one. 20 inch pounds. Come back up here, same thing. Make sure you press down so you don't strip out that head. Keep it solid. Okay, so 20 inch pounds. There you go, the base is mounted. Looks pretty good. Hey, now. Let's put on those scope rings.